In today's video, I want to talk about the sigmoid function. The sigmoid function plays an important role in the context of logistic regression. What do we mean by that? Logistic regression is a technique to predict the outcome of binary classification problems. In this case, the sigmoid function plays the role of an activation function. It takes the weighted sum of the input features as an input and outputs the probability value of the outcome. Let us see the graphical representation of the sigmoid function. The sigmoid function, as we can see, is an S-shaped curve. For any value of x, the sigmoid function will output a value between 0 and 1. How does the formula of the sigmoid function look like? The sigmoid function, which is denoted by the Greek letter sigma, is given as 1 over 1 plus the exponential of minus x. Here, the exponential of minus x is the inverse of the well-known exponential function. How does the plot of the inverse of the exponential look like? Let us plot both the exponential and its inverse on the same graph. As we can see, the inverse of the exponential has the same profile as the exponential function. The only difference is the inverse exponential is flipped with respect to the y-axis. If we study the limits of the inverse of the exponential function, we can see that when x takes large negative values toward minus infinity, the inverse exponential diverges to plus infinity. On the other hand, when x is close to the value of 0, the inverse exponential converges to the value of 1. And finally, when x goes toward big positive values, the exponential vanishes toward 0. Based on the limits of the inverse of the exponential, we can now compute the limits of the sigmoid function. Let us first start with the limit when x takes negative values. In this case, we already know that the inverse of the exponential goes toward plus infinity. And since the rest of the terms are constant, we end up with 1 over infinity, which goes toward 0. This means that the sigmoid function goes toward 0 when x is negative. Now in the case that x goes toward 0, as we have seen earlier, the inverse exponential goes toward the value of 1. This means we end up with a ratio of 1 over 1 plus 1, which is equal to 0 0.5. Consequently, when x equals 0, the sigmoid function takes the value of 0 0.5. Finally, when x take large positive values, we know that the inverse exponential vanishes toward the value of 0. In this case, we end up with a ratio of 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. This means that the sigmoid function converges toward the value of 1 for large positive values of x. In this case, the three values 0, 0 0.5, and 1 are points of interest in the case of the sigmoid function. Now that we know the profile of the limits of the sigmoid function, let us go back to the graphical representation of the sigmoid function. We can see that 1 and 0 are the upper bound and the lower bound respectively for the sigmoid function, while 0 0.5 is the value that the sigmoid function takes when x is equal to 0. We say that the sigmoid function has a squashing effect. This means that for any value that x takes, the value of the sigmoid function is always between 0 and 1. 
To show how the sigmoid function is used to make predictions, let us consider the use case of a binary classification problem of a dog versus cat picture. In this case, the decision boundary separating the two different classes is a straight line and can be represented by the following formula. If we want to know the probability of any point on this line, we need to apply the sigmoid function. By doing so, we can see that any point belonging to the decision boundary line has a 50-50% chance of predicting a cat or a dog picture. If we draw lines to either sides of the decision boundary line, then we can apply the sigmoid function to subsequently predict the probability value of any points belonging to these lines. We can see that the further we go from the decision boundary line, the probability of predicting a certain class, for instance a cat picture, is way bigger than the probability of the other class, for instance a dog picture. Consequently, using the sigmoid as an activation function, the prediction formula will give us different values of probabilities between 0 and 1. Following machine learning conventions, every time we have a probability value that has a value bigger than 0 0.5, we assign the value 1 to the prediction label. On the other hand, any time we have a probability value that is lower than 0 0.5, we then assign the value 0 to the prediction label. 